Hi and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at how to paint our rocks from Linda Krantz's Only One You book. We started designing these uh, in class. We did our rough drafts. We got some peer feedback from other people about what they liked and what could help make it better. And then we redesigned it down here for number two. And today we're going to look at how to paint that on our rock. Now your teacher may give you your paint today in a variety of ways. It might be in a cup, it might be in a palette. But for my rock today, I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of white paint on there and I'm going to use my rough brush. You can tell it's a rough brush because it looks a little beat up and his hair is sort of all over the place because I can't just paint straight. If I paint straight, see all those white spots in there? I have to be able to really go in there and do it more like a stencil brush where I push all of the little hairs down into the rock. I might have to touch it where it has some paint on it. That's okay, this is a washable paint. Um, we're gonna cover these rocks with some sealant when we're finished so they won't wash off when they're outside. But for today in class, we wanna make sure it definitely washes off of you and your clothing. A little bit more on the back side. Again, if you're using a cup, you'll probably just wanna take a little bit of paint out of your cup and then wipe it on the edge of the cup so there's not too much and put it on your rock. And I have lots of extra on here, so I'm gonna really spread this out, getting down in all those little nooks and crannies. I don't want those spots to show through. We are going to add color layers on here after it dries, and we get our patterns drawn on there. But for today, we wanna to make sure it's nice and covered, and then I can put it on the drying rack or in the rock box when I'm finished. So the first thing I want to do with my rock once that paint is nice and dry is I want to sketch out this design on my rock. So I'm going to look back and forth between the two a little bit and my rock I ended up using is a little different than the rock shape or contour line shape that I put on my original design. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just adjust for that. I'm only really worried about the side that's facing up so I'm going to start copying some of the patterns and ideas that I had. If I find that those don't line up, I might have to make some adjustments on my rock while I'm sketching it too. That's all part of being an artist is being flexible and making some changes as you're going through. And I want to make sure these are nice and big so I can paint. We don't have super tiny fine line paint brushes. I don't have to worry about erasing if I mess it up because we're just going to paint over that part. So I can sort of work like this. I'm not pushing too hard. I don't want to break my pencil, but I do want it to show up on there. And I'm going to do the big fin. Over here, and I have two colors there. So I'm going to do that inside one. It is a little bumpy. Again, we'll just make adjustments as we need to. There we go. And the big eyeball. I have some eyelashes. And the big lips. Kind of like this. And then I had my decorative bubbles on there. I'm going to put those back on. Go. So I have all the essential elements there on my rock. So now I'm going to look at painting. painting. I'm going to have my palette available on the table with all the colors. I might not use all of these colors. Um, so maybe some other table mates of mine are using those colors, but they're all in there. I need a cup with some water to rinse my brushes. I have three different size brushes. I have my larger brush, a nice pointy brush, and a tinier detailed brush to use, and some paper to dry my brush in between because I don't wanna get the water mixed in with my paints and water my paints down. So if I start looking at my fish, I'm going to work in the smaller detail areas first, and I'm going to save the big yellow part for last when I'm doing that. So I'm going to start on the inside and work my way out, I think. So that brush is nice and dried off. See, there's no more water coming out of it. That's what we want. I'm going to pick up the paint color. And I'm using a smaller brush because I'm working in a smaller area. And I'm just gonna add a nice layer in there. I'm not going to worry about it being super perfect. We are going to go back over it with Sharpie when it dries so that it cleans up my edges a little. I just want to make sure I'm following the color patterns I had on my design. And sometimes you might want to turn your rock a little bit 
make sure it gets covered to that bottom edge. We're not worried so much about the bottoms. We will be laying these nice and flat out in the garden so the bottoms won't show. And we just want to make sure we're covering those edges down to the bottom. Like that. Oh, I did forget the lips, didn't I? I should go back in and do the lips before I switch colors. Same thing, I want to make sure I'm wrapping it around that edge while I'm painting. And I change the angle of my paintbrush as I'm going so that it matches that flat edge against the edge where I'm stopping with my pencil. When I rinse, I want to stir. I'm going to put my brush, my brush all the way down and push it against the bottom and stir it like you would stir your tea. I'm not going like this. That's going to make a mess and get it all over your friend's paper. I'm just carefully doing it on the bottom. Wipe off the extra. Then use my paper towel to dry my brush. Remember, we don't want any extra paint in there. And then I'll pick up the next color that I need. I'm going to keep going with my whole fish. So now I'm going to switch brushes. I'm getting into an area that's tinier in here than what that other brush could do. So I'm going to use this round brush. I'm going to turn it in a circle, almost like it was a pencil sharpener, and kind of pull it off the edge so it stays nice and pointy. And I'm going to go nice and slow and fill in the areas around the paint in here so they don't overlap. Sometimes I scoop a little bit up on there, but I have to really slow down and keep my brush pointy for these tinier areas in here. And now I'm going to switch over to my larger brush to cover my larger spaces, but if I find I get to areas where it's too tiny to fit this big brush again, I'll switch back over to my smaller brush size. Now, we're going to put these on the drying rack, and when we come back next time, they'll be nice and dry, and we can do the Sharpies on top of them to add in all of our little tiny details. After your rock completely dries, we're going to go back in with a Sharpie, or any permanent marker will do, and you're going to find the edges where your colors change, and you're going to add a black line in there. And you'll probably have to do these short little strokes with a Sharpie, a little bit on the side to get those to show up. And there's some nooks and crannies. You don't want to push too hard and dull the Sharpie. You just want to do a nice light stroke over and over again, kind of a wispy, almost painting-like stroke between those two. Any place that there's a color change or that you need to add in some black. When you're all finished and you have the black where you want it, you might even want to go in and add some additional highlights that you hadn't thought of before, just to give it a little bit more interest with some patterns or some shapes. Remember, this is your fish. It's completely up to you what it should look like when you're finished. Then you can turn it over and on the back where it's blank, you can sign your name. And you might even want to put the date. Like that. Next, we're going to seal this fish up so that it's so waterproof. Next, we're going to seal our rock with some Mod Podge. This will help make it waterproof once it thoroughly dries. As you can see, this jar hasn't been opened in a while, so it already has a layer sealed over the top. I'm just gonna peel that out of the way. When this dries, it will dry clear, so you don't have to worry about your fish um, looking white. That will go away as it dries. And just like when we painted the rock, you wanna make sure that you're using a rough brush, like one of these, and you're really kind of scrubbing it like a sponge down into all the nooks and crannies of your rock, because you don't wanna leave any exposed areas where the water might get underneath there when it's raining while the rock's outside, um, or for snow and ice to form. You are gonna get your hands a little sticky when you turn it over and you do the backside. When you put these down, you wanna put them on a plastic surface so they don't dry to paper and rip the paper back up with it. 
Um, there should be plenty in the room someplace for you to put these down. I'm gonna tip it like that. And it usually only takes about five or 10 minutes for this to dry. And then it's ready to also take a picture for your Art Sonia account.